Hey everyone, Heartless here bringing you guys another StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void daily match. Today it is going to be a Terran vs Zerg on Prion Terraces. So spawning in the bottom right hand corner playing as our red Zerg playing for Rival Gaming. It is Caleb, I think it's Arrakis. I'm just going to call him Caleb. Because saying that full name right now is going to take way too long. And spawning in the top left hand corner playing as our blue Terran playing for Team Gravity. It is EJK. I've actually casted EJK before. He plays some very good matches. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what these two have in store for us. This is a GM versus a GM. I'm not sure if this was on the ladder or if this was from a tournament. But it did come from spawningtool.com. You guys should go check them out. They're a fantastic website. They have lots of really good stuff for uh, analysis. For being able to look at build orders, build timing, stuff like that. Wonderful website. Go check them out. All right, so Caleb, it looks like he's going to go hatch first, and then we're probably going to see gas then pool, possibly pool gas. Sometimes they come right next to each other, but most likely it's going to be gas pool. Yeah, yeah so it's going to be hatch gas pool. As for EJK, we're going to see a barracks. We already have the reactor going. Probably going to see a reaper expand out of this. Both of these are very standard plays that we see all the time. I'm not surprised by anything here. What I am curious to see, though, is what they do with their gas. Their gas timings can be very indicative of the possible different plays that they may have going on. So here in a little bit, once he does end up having enough gas stored away for speed, what are we going to see? If Does he keep all the workers on the extractor or not? That's a good indicator of what we might end up seeing. As for EJK, yeah, just the standard Reaper expand. Reaper's on its way. Expansion's already down. I'm curious to see if we end up seeing possibly a second early gas. Maybe a couple of gases down here. Like I said, gas is really indicative of what they're going to do. And we should be seeing speed in just about 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, there it is. There is the speed. And does he pull any drones off? No. Caleb does not pull any drones off. Interesting. Typically, once you have enough gas, unless you're going to be doing something cheeky, you'll pull off two of the you'll pull off two drones off the gas, and he is not. So let's see what he's going to end up doing. The Reaper coming over here might be able to get a kill or two. Is that is that a committed gas or is that just to keep the drone alive? We'll find out here in just a sec. The Reaper not able to get any kills, but it is going to be a committed gas. Caleb going for a second gas already. Interesting play by Caleb. As for EJK, getting a second gas as well. Factory on its way. Yeah, but here's the reactor. We're probably going to probably be seeing double Marines out here in just a little bit. Um, not sure what kind of composition we're going to see. We could possibly see bio tank. We could... Ooh, a tech lab going down. Not a reactor. Well, if it was a reactor, it'd be actually switching here with the barracks but it is gonna be a tech lab so possibly tanks possibly I, I don't know why you would go cyclone but I guess that's always a, an option anyway a third gas going down for Caleb he what is he planning on doing hmm layers almost done he hasn't spent any of his gas yet so I don't think this is gonna be a huge roach ravager thing is this going to be Mutas? Typically, if you're going to go Muta, you have a lot more Lings out on the map by now. He only has a few. Ooh, is he going to get... A, ooh, he gets one of the Reapers. Uh, not going to be able to get the other one. No, it's going to be Hydralisk. So, interesting decision by Caleb. Curious to see what he goes with the Hydralisk. Maybe we might see Lurker? Maybe Mass Hydra? I'm not fully sure yet. We'll find out in just a minute. All right, EJK on his side of the map. He looks like, yes, he is going to be going Tanks. Getting a medevac out. Medevacs are so important for those tank evacs. And already getting the third command center. So that's pretty big. And we'll see what he decides to do with that here in just a little bit. Gas is two, uh, sorry, three and four now going down. So he's going to be going quite heavy gas. And unfortunately for EJK, that, excuse me, <clears throat> that scan did not reveal much. And yes, yes, it is going to be lurkers, especially with that amount of gas that Caleb is banking up. That is going to be a lot of lurkers. Whoop, sorry about that. 
And he actually has some pretty good spread, uh, Overlord spread for Vision. And the Overseer is going to move on in. And let's see what he's able to see with this scout. EJK is trying to shut it down, but he see Caleb sees everything. Caleb sees all the production, both factories going down. Wonderful scout by this overseer, overseer. Definitely doing his job, but probably, yep, dead. It's gonna die there, but not before the damage is done for EJK. Unfortunately, not able to shut that scout down, and now Caleb knows exactly what to expect. And here we see the creep highway beginning to move across, and the overlords moving themselves in position and going to be creating a creep highway all the way across the map. That is a lot of queens and a lot of hydralisks, which are probably going to be morphing into lurkers here in just about 10 15 seconds. Oh, and EJK moves out for taking his third base now. Oh, this is not good because the attack is on its way. I don't think he knows about the lurkers yet. No, he does not know about the lurker den. He doesn't know any of it. He just sees a bunch of queens. Oh, this could be so damaging. Thankfully, he does have some tanks here, and he is putting up some missile turrets. So this is good. I think he might have an indication, considering that these missile turrets are going down and they're going to be used for detection. I think he has an inkling that there this is a possibility. And here come the lurkers, along with the queens. The lurkers are going to go ahead and get into position. They're going to go ahead and burrow, but one of them dies from the tank fire, but the rest of them get down on, get burrowed, and now they just start wailing on everything. So many SCVs are dying, and EJK is put in a very difficult position. The tanks are able to wail on these queens a good amount, but not before. Oh, a couple good injects on keeping that lurker alive, but Caleb doing so much damage here to EJK's economy, considering how far behind he is. In worker count he is down behind 11 workers here and behind all of this he stops EJK's third he stops all of these SCVs from mining and he takes his third behind this as well that was a pretty strong timing because that was all off of two base there being able to shut EJK down who is definitely going for the long-term game can Caleb sorry can EJK actually push this away that all oh, that SCV is gonna die that is unfortunate these Queens doing a lot of damage and taking a lot of hits from these uh, from these tanks and this has been a very good attack at being able to shut down EJK's third and limit him and behind all this Caleb has been able to drone like crazy getting an infestation pit behind it taking his third gases for uh, sorry five and six this is a fantastic position that Caleb has put himself into. He's been able to drone pretty hard the last bit. Now, these, <clears throat> excuse me, Hellions are going to start moving in. He needs to do some type of economic damage here, but is he going to be able to do a whole lot? I'm not fully sure. He, I don't even think he has a cut. Did he get any drone kills? Okay, he got a couple. Not much at all, though. And while this standoff is going off outside of the third of EJK, those Hellions, I think they got a couple, two, three, five, so seven drone kills. Not bad, but considering that Caleb is now up on his third base, now running, ooh, he's got to keep these Lurkers alive. The Liberators were able to do some good damage there along with the tanks. Tanks do outrange Lurkers, which is good for EJK, and so Caleb is going to have to move out, is going to have to move back for right now, but I think he's trying to transition out of this because now he has a lot of Ravagers in production. His economy is back up, a couple a couple rounds of drones, and his economy is back to normal. And yeah, I believe he's going to transition into Roach Ravager, which EJK is kind of prepared for. The position on his tanks isn't the greatest, but at the same time, can he deal with this? Caleb is so much further in so much further ahead in terms of army supply because of the being able to keep AJK back for so long and shutting down the the economy of the third base. Yes, he technically had more workers, but because the third base was shut down, it pretty much limited him in terms of production. And so because of that, Caleb now has a more sizable force and he's going to move right on in. And the Roach is starting to get to start to get to work. The Ravager's dropping all sorts of corrosive bile on these tanks and on the entire army of EJK. And EJK begins to really start hurting his economy 
is be just plummets horribly because of all the SCVs that were killed. And he's just going to start moving right on up. These Ravagers doing so much damage. They're going to drop a couple more corrosive Biles. And they're going to whiff. But at what cost now? Caleb is ahead in economy by 10 workers. But also in ahead, ahead of an army by about 20. This is a very precarious situation for EJK. And it all came down to that contain of the third base for so long. That was a few minutes. And also now Caleb taking his fourth base. That's going to be in a... About a 25%, possibly 30% increase in production as soon as that finishes. But the third base is up and running. He should probably transfer some of these drones over to the fourth here. But the, the Roaches and the Ravagers start pushing in on the third of EJK. EJK doesn't have anything to deal with it. And there it is. GG by EJK. Very well played by Caleb. That was so well done. Being able to have a strong timing to pretty much siege up your opponent's third. Stop the, stop the economy that they were going for, limit their production, and allow yourself to launch into this next stage of the game, which he did. Very well played by Caleb. Unfortunately for EJK, that was a valiant attempt. Very good. Very good play by both, but Caleb came out on top because that was a very good siege. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this match. If you did, please remember to hit that subscribe button down below. Please remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitch, and on Twitter. Please remember to go check out Enoch Productions. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.